Welcome everyone to my short video presentation where I would like to introduce a new distance measure for two point sets in the plane that is based on the Frechet distance between two polygonal curves. So given two point sets, we ask if there are two curves through the point sets with small Frechet distance. And intuitively, two point sets have a small distance under this measure if there are linear formations of the point sets such that these formations have a similar shape. But before introducing the formal definition and the algorithmic approaches, I would like to recall the definition of the Frechet distance between two polygonal curves. Given two curves P and Q, we can re-parameterize one curve, say Q, and compute the maximum distance of a point on P and the corresponding point on the reparameterized curve Q. And now the Frechet distance minimizes this distance by ranging over all possible reparameterizations. It is commonly illustrated by the shortest leash length between a man and a dog walking on predefined paths continuously from beginning to end. The discrete Frechet distance approximates the Frechet distance and in this setting, we only consider positions where the endpoints of the leash are located at vertices. Formally, it is defined by a minimum length coupling between the vertex set. And a coupling is a sequence of distinct pairs from the vertex se sequence of P and the vertex sequence of Q that respects the order of the vertex sequences. The length of a coupling is the maximum distance between two points of a pair in this sequence. And the discrete Frechet distance is the minimum possible length of such a coupling. For these curves, for instance, the minimum length coupling is shown by the small black segments. The Frechet distance and the discrete Frechet distance are well studied and they can be computed in O nm log nm and O nm time and even slightly faster. And here and in the following n and m denote the size of the vertex sets of the curves or the size of the point sets. A related problem considers a curve and one point set and asks whether the points can be connected such that the Frechet distance or the discrete Frechet distance between the resulting curve and p is at most a given value epsilon. Both the discrete and the continuous version of this problem have been shown to be NP-hard. We now, in some sense, move one step further and consider the setting where no curve is given but two point sets only. And we ask, can we find two curves with the points as vertex set that are within Frechet distance or discrete Frechet distance at most epsilon? And we denote the Frechet distance or the discrete Frechet distance, respectively, between the point sets as the smallest possible value of epsilon. Formally, let alpha be an order of the points of S and beta be an order of the points in R, and let C alpha S be the polygonal curve through S respecting the order alpha, and C beta R the polygonal curve through R respecting the order beta. Using the same notation as for curves, we obtain the Frechet distance or the discrete Frechet distance by minimizing the Frechet distance between the curves ranging of all possible orders of the points. The discrete version in contrast to the point set curve setting can be computed in polynomial time. However, the continuous variant remains NP-hard to compute and we show that it is even hard to approximate for any constant factor. Let's start with the discrete version, which turns out to be quite an easy problem to solve. We first observe that the distance equals the Hausdorff distance between the point sets, which can be computed in O n plus m time log n plus m time uh, using Veronoi diagrams. Furthermore, a specific minimum length coupling and thus two specific curves that realize the distance can be computed via looping through the point sets and answering nearest neighbor queries. Here we are given two point sets. We start by looping through the red point set and predefine a coupling by connecting each point to its nearest neighbor in the blue point set. 
Now we can connect each left blue point to its nearest neighbor in the red set and destroy previously computed links if this is necessary. And this algorithm runs in O n plus m log n m time and we obtain two curves by arbitrarily connecting the points within one part of the coupling and also by connecting the parts arbitrarily. However, we would like to detect a simple common shape of the two point sets if this exists. So instead of arbitrarily connecting the parts, we choose one representative point for each part of the coupling and compute a short and simple curve through this set, as shown here by the dotted black curve. The corresponding curves through the point sets are obtained by projecting the points onto the black curve and by connecting the points in the order given by the projection. In contrast to the discrete version, it is hard to approximate the Frechet distance between two point sets for any constant factor. And this can be shown by reducing from the 3 set variant 3 b 2 set. And in this variant, each literal appears exactly twice in the formula, and no two clauses have two literals in common. Now, given a 3b2 set formula, we construct two point sets, again a red and a blue one, and compute a value epsilon such that the Frechet distance between the point sets is at most epsilon if and only if the formula is satisfiable. And the core idea is to place points representing clauses that must be visited by segments defining an assignment of the corresponding variable. So this is a construction of the variable gadget. There are two points which force to add a segment between the lower two and the upper two blue points. The red points in the middle of the square represent four clauses and they can only be covered by the diagonals. But we cannot add both diagonals as we would obtain a circle. Thus, the choice of the diagonal defines an assignment to the variable x and vice versa. Now, the characteristics of the 3b2 formula uniquely defines a blue curve that is close, in fact it has distance zero to all red points, and the only possible resulting red curve is congruent to the blue curve. During the construction of the point sets, we only need to avoid collinearity, for instance, of a point representing a class and two blue points of different variables. But these forbidden coordinates can be all computed in polynomial time and thus the whole construction runs in polynomial time and the claim follows. The figure here on the left shows the complete construction for a formula with four clauses and the forbidden points are marked with crosses. And two curves with Frechet distance zero are shown on the right. How can you compute the Frechet distance between two point sets beside trying all possible permutations of the points? Well, we sure need to exploit the given geometry somehow, and the algorithmic idea is to start with some parts of the curve and to efficiently decide whether these parts can be extended and concatenated to obtain two curves with Frechet distance at most a given value epsilon. To this end, we need to introduce some terminology for the point sets S and R. First, we say a point in S is an anchored point if it has a neighbor in R with an epsilon distance. Second, a point in S is a floating point if it is not anchored and if there is a segment between two points in R with an epsilon distance. In this case, the segment is called a visitor of that point. Third, if a point is neither anchored nor floating, it is isolated. And this notation is also used for points in R correspondingly. Surely if there is an isolated point or if there is less than two pairs of anchored points, the Frechet distance between S and R is greater than epsilon. So in the following, we assume that no point is isolated and we assume that such pairs do exist. Now we consider all floating point visitor combinations. Such a combination consists of all floating points and one segment for each of the floating points. For each combination, we run a couple of geometric queries and discard the combination or extend the combination to subcurves with Frechet distance at most epsilon, 
depending on the results of the queries. For instance, if the combination contains a circle, we discard it from further consideration. Or if the combination contains point visitor pairs as shown in this figure, here the segment R1, R2 is the visitor of S, and S1, S2 the visitor of R1. Assume that both points S1 and S2 are floating points, as both S1 and S2 are outside the epsilon surrounding of R1 and R2, there is no subpath through points in S that is close to the segment R1, R2. And thus, this combination can be discarded. Another example of a combination that can be discarded is the following. The fact that R1 is an endpoint of the visitor of the floating point S1, and R3 is a floating point visited by S1, S2, induces a sag for every possible extension. And if the sag is too large, the Frisch distance is larger than epsilon. There are several other cases of the geometric structure we need to verify, but I will skip the details here. The core idea is that if no query implies that the combination can be discarded, the floating point visitor combination can be extended to subcurves with Frechet distance at most epsilon, as shown in this example, where the dotted lines are the extensions of the floating point visitor pairs. And in this case, we have reduced the problem to the discrete case, which now consists of all endpoints of the constructed subcurves and the remaining anchored points. Here, for instance, these two curves witness that the Frechet distance between the red and the blue point set is at most epsilon. What is the runtime of this approach? Let C be the number of floating points and K be the maximum number of visitors of a floating point and let Q be the number of anchored points. Then we have K to the power C floating point visitor combinations and all geometric tests can be performed in C log C time as we need to perform some sorting of the floating points along a visitor segment and test for sex. And testing if the remaining points still have an absolute neighbor takes time linear in Q. Thus, the total runtime is O k to the power c times q plus c log c. To sum up, we introduced a new similarity measure between point sets based on the Fichet distance. The discrete distance equals the Hausdorff distance, and two curves realizing the distance can be computed efficiently. The continuous distance, in contrast, is NP hard to approximate, and the proposed algorithm is exponential in the number of floating points.